The probability of event A occurring alone is generally speaking between 0 and 1 inclusive. If it is 0, of course, it is impossible for event A to occur. If it is 1, it is certain that event A will occur. This applies to the probability of event B occurring. This lesson is about determining the probability that a combination of events A and B will occur. There are two cases to consider. One, the probability of event B occurring is independent of event A, or you could say independent of the probability of event A occurring, but I like to write it this way. That means that you can calculate the probability of event B occurring independently of calculating the probability of event A occurring. The second case is when the probability of event B occurring is dependent on event A. You'll see what I mean for these two cases when I show you the examples. First of all, the most straightforward case, the simplest case, that is when the two probabilities are independent of each other. The probability of A and B occurring is equal to the product of the two probabilities, the probability of event A occurring and the probability of event B occurring. Let's say I lay bricks. First layer, four large bricks, three of which are always green. On top of that, on top of each large brick goes two small bricks, one of which is always red. Now there are eight total small bricks, four times two, right? Among all those small bricks, how many are a red brick laid upon a green brick. One, two, three. Three out of eight. That's the same answer to the question, what is the probability of randomly picking a combination of a large brick and a small brick, such that the large brick is green and the small brick is red? Three-eighths. I just multiplied three out of four for the large bricks times 1 over 2 for the small bricks. You see 3 of the 4 large bricks are green and 1 out of every pair of small bricks is red. Now let's deal with the dependent case. The probability of event B occurring is dependent on event A. Initially I'll write the equation the same way. In the, this example I have a bag of marbles. There are eight in the bag. Three are blue and five are green. What's the probability of dipping into the bag and pulling out a blue marble, pocketing it, and then dipping into the bag again and pulling out another blue marble? Well, event A is definitely three over eight. Three out of every eight times I dip into the bag, I'll pull out a blue marble because there are three blue marbles. If I dip into the bag a second time, what's the probability of pulling out a blue marble? Is it three-eighths again? Careful! I pocketed the marble. I didn't put it back, so I've changed the total number of marbles in the bag. I've reduced the total number by one and the number of blue marbles by one. So now, this probability of the combination of events is three-eighths times two-sevenths. That, when simplified, is 3 over 28. So what's the probability of then dipping into the bag again and pulling out a third blue marble? Just multiply that by 1 over 6. 2 minus 1 is 1, and 7 minus 1 is 6. That turns out to be 1 over 56. What's the probability of dipping into the bag a fourth time and pulling out a blue marble? Well, subtract 1 from the numerator, subtract 1 from the denominator, and I will be multiplying this by 0 over 5. That would give me 0. Well, that makes sense. There were only three blue marbles in the bag to begin with. It's impossible to pull out four blue marbles in succession.